welcome to the Lovebird Lane podcast. I'm Julianne and I'm also known as Lovebird Lane on Instagram and Ravelry and I'm so happy that you could spend some time with me today to have a little bit of a chat about what I've been making this week. So it's a lovely warm spring day. It's very very sunshiny. It's quite warm in the sun uh, but not too hot actually today um, but you know I'm a complete sun phobe so I'm inside as uh, you will usually find me. <laughs> and in our new house here it is it seems to have very very good insulation because uh, the inside of the house is freezing I have a coffee sitting in front of me just so that I've got something nice and warm to drink as we go my fingers are absolutely freezing um, and I'm wearing a lovely sweater which I forgot to show everybody last week but I will talk about that in a moment I don't know that there's anything really off the top that I really want to talk about. However, I have had an idea and I want to kind of have a little bit of a gauge of how people feel about it and see whether it's worth uh, investing the time to do a bit more investigation and and uh, trying to figure out how it would work. But my thought was perhaps to um, do something along the lines of a live podcast once a month or once every other month. And by live, I mean it will still be on YouTube. It will just be at a set time and it will be a live stream. So uh, you will all be able to interact with me as we go on the podcast. So the way it would work is it probably wouldn't be quite as good. Um, I'm not sure how, whether I can get it from my DSLR to the computer and uh, encoded and uploaded. Um, but it possibly will be via my computer. So the, the quality probably won't be quite as good, uh, but I will be able to um, interact with you. So you'll be able to write comments um, in a chat and I will be able to respond to you on the fly. So I was, I've been thinking that might be a bit of fun because I have been watching uh, Rachel Smith of the Woolen Spinning podcast and I think it's still called Woolen Spinning. Um, and she does like a Patreon only live stream uh, occasionally. And I just really liked the idea because she, she, you know, she responds to people who are talking to her throughout the podcast. So I thought that would be quite fun uh, as something that we could do from time to time if people will be around to um, interact with me. it will be pretty lonely if you're not. So I'm in Adelaide in Australia, so I was trying to think of a time that would be suitable. If you are interested in the live stream format, perhaps uh, let me know down below in the comments uh, what would be an appropriate time and day you think uh, for me to do this. I probably wouldn't like to do it so much when there's a bunch of people in the house. Uh, we will be setting up an office in the back room of the house, so potentially um, once that is done, I'll be able to live stream from there and have the door closed. So I could possibly do a, a Saturday or a Sunday stream. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it might be fun to, yeah, have a interactive podcast and, um, yeah, I can answer any of your questions or, you know, you can just talk to me and I can respond to what you have to say. Um, yeah, I just thought it might be fun. So let me know uh, what you think about that and uh, if it's a, a positive uh, feedback, then I'll have a look into how I can get that to work. Because at this point in time, I absolutely have no clue. Uh, coffee break. <laughs> and little side note, as for coffee, as I completely uh, swallow that mouthful, um, my housemate has actually introduced me to a product which I'm actually really enjoying. Um, I don't know whether it's available all over the place, but I know here in Adelaide um, there is a Makona, the Makona brand coffee. They have a hazelnut. Um, I think it says it has a swirl of natural hazelnut. Um, and I'm actually kind of obsessed with it. It is instant coffee. I haven't really drunk instant coffee for a really long time because we have an espresso and a Breville Aroma Fresh. So I usually only ever have, you know, proper coffee. Um, I guess all coffee is proper coffee, but you know what I mean. Um, and yeah, so I've been having this uh, instant coffee with the hazelnut in it. And because I'm on keto, I have cream in my coffee and it's actually quite delicious. Uh, so that is what I'm indulging in today. So, all right, um, before we get much further, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I'm wearing my All The Love sweater and I realized that I actually forgot to talk about this last week. And it's been 
a little while since I finished it because I think I, I finished it over a week ago. Um, week and a half nearly, nearly two weeks. Let me get that worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, so it got finished, it got blocked and I wore it out to a quiz night that Simon was doing. I think I mentioned that he was home doing the quiz night last week. Um, yeah, so I wore it to the quiz night. Although when all of the people were packed into the sailing club, it actually got very hot, so I ended up taking it off. I apologise, there's a very rude neighbour out there ponking their horn. All right, so this was Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, Tweed, Bendigo Tweed in the old rose colourway. I don't know how we will go if I sit up, but you can just kind of have a look there. It's like a tweedy, obviously a tweed yarn in this nice uh, mauvey colour. And... The pattern is by Hohi Locatelli and I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to knit and it was quite a, what's the word? Not a palette cleanser, that's not the right thing. Um, it was refreshing, shall I say, because I had been in a little bit of a knitting mojo slump before we moved. And as I have said before, I was working on socks pretty much uh, because that was all I had the energy and the, the mental capacity for through our move. And once we had moved and this yarn arrived, this is actually the very first yarn package I ever received at our new address. Yeah, I, I was supposed to be actually casting something on for Simon because I bought some yarn for him, the same type of yarn in the same package and so Technically, it was supposed to be a sweater for Simon first, but uh, in the end, it ended up being a sweater for Julianne. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I knocked this sweater out in about two weeks and two days, I believe it was. So it was super fast, especially for a big boxy sweater. Like you can see, it's it's very boxy. It's very wide. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. it the, the, the yarn was nice. The pattern was really good, obviously, because it's it's Hohi Locatelli. Um, her patterns are always good. And yeah, it just flew off the needles. And unfortunately, it's like just warm enough now that I can't really wear it, um, which is a bummer, which probably doesn't bode well for me finishing off my rose cardigan that I talked about last week either. But, you know, there's always going to be another winter, right? Hopefully, as long as global warming doesn't kill us all. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't really know what else to say. I had some leftovers of the yarn, which is still sitting on my coffee table. I'm really, really bad. Um, but then again, I don't really have a place at this point in time to store my yarn. So uh, the leftovers are just still sitting on the coffee table. <laughs> my, my housemate hasn't complained yet, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> So I guess I can get on to what I have been working on, which is only really one thing this week. And the one thing I have been working on is my All About That Brioche shawl. And I showed you the start of this last week. Um, and it's pretty much just look a whole lot different. Um, it is obviously bigger because <laughs> it's the asymmetrical triangle shape. So I, I think I'm almost at the point where I'm going to be adding the brioche in the first section of brioche. So it's just garter stitch. It's the um, asymmetrical triangle on a bias. It has slip stitches on the edges. And from the pattern, uh, I believe she said she had about 35% of her first colorway left um, by the time she started the brioche uh, section. So I worked it out for mine because I've actually got less yardage than she, uh, the lady who wrote the pattern. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I know it's Maliha, Malia Design, but I can't remember <laughs> the actual lady who designed it. Um, it'll have been in the, the doobly-doo at the beginning of me talking about this. Um, but yes, this is Vuillen Vine Yarns in her footsie base, and this is the colorway Pharaoh, which is... From that weird rambling description that I that I gave last week is a character from a series of books that Kristen likes and I also like, so that is why I have this yarn. And yeah, and there's not really much to say about it. Like I said, it's just an asymmetrical. Um, what have I got my my yarn across the front there? I'm, I'm looking at the camera, going, why is there a line there? <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's just the asymmetrical and I'm about to start the, the brioche. I am still a little bit on the fence about whether I am going to ever wear this. Um, as anybody who has woolen vine yarns knows, it's, it's rare as hen's teeth. It's hard to get a hold of. And when you do have it, you want to save it for something really, really important, really good. You know, something that you'll get lots of wear out and you'll be able to enjoy it a lot. However, I've discovered that I'm actually more of a garment knitter than an accessory knitter. And, um, and clearly, uh, I made a giant boxy sweater in two weeks and two days. Um, so I'm... I'm a little bit unsure as to whether I will wear this shawl. So for the moment, it's good knitting in the evenings. Um, but I'm thinking like one of my Instagram friends, Bonnie, said, I might leave the balls attached, the balls of yarn attached. Um, temporarily to see whether I'm happy with it because I'm I, I hate cutting a ball of yarn if I don't have to and if I'm going to frog this and if I don't actually like it or I'm not going to wear it I don't really want to have the yarn cut so that makes it a little bit hard so going with Bonnie's suggestion she said I'm sure nobody will notice if you just put the balls of yarn in your handbag or something to that to that effect so that's possibly what I'm going to do. I'm going to knit it, finish it probably, and then decide whether it's likely to be something that I will wear. If I do wear shawls, I prefer like more of a crescent shape with a lot, like a very long wingspan type shawl rather than like the triangle shawls. Uh, so I think because this is the elongated triangle, I'll probably be able to wear it. Um, I'm pretty sure it will be something that I will wear. Um, but, you know, I guess that will remain to be seen. So, yeah, for the moment, I'm just going to keep knitting on it. Probably finish it, but probably not cut the yarn off. Uh, so that's where that one stands. Uh, if you have any thoughts or, <laughs> or suggestions, please do let me know down in the comments. Um, I'm... I'm an indecisive person at the best of times and especially when it comes down to something that's quite precious to me like this yarn and um, yeah I can be quite indecisive but yeah for the moment no, no, no harm done apart from a little wasted time if I do frog it uh, so but that doesn't to me it's not wasted time because you know it helped me get through the evenings and <laughs> kept me awake because I tend to like to fall asleep at like eight o'clock at night so um, it's it's at least done its job of keeping me awake past eight so the eagle-eyed of you might notice that there's not something up here anymore <laughs> and that is because I have been doing a lot of spinning this week if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen a little sneaky peek of this. Um, on the end, you can see the layers of my hand, hand spun through it. So I have got a electric eel wheel nano. I always get the words mix up. I always get electric eel right, of course, but I always get the wheel and the nano back to front. Um, electric eel wheel nano. I received it last Saturday. It arrived on a Saturday morning. Uh, we were all still in bed and uh, the doorbell rang. So we were like, oh no, who is this? And uh, Simon quickly got up and threw on his uh, dressing gown, went to the door and there was just a little box sitting on the doorstep. Um, very very uh, petite little box too. It's quite, quite compact. Um, now, I have recorded footage of an unboxing of my electric eel wheel. However, I haven't checked the footage to see if it's usable. If it is usable, I will have a an unboxing video on the channel at some stage. Um, just to keep an eye out for it. I did a little test, um, a little test skein, uh, which I put on uh, Instagram as well, of just some plain white uh, merino that I had, just to get a feel for it, see how it went. It didn't have a much of a learning curve at all for me. Um, I've been spinning since... I think November 2015 so I'm quite comfortable with um, most spinning wheels I'm not I'm not a spindle spinner but I, I can pretty much sit down at a, a spinning wheel and figure it out quite quickly so 
I have been spinning on something a little bit more interesting than white fiber because I did that little test gain and I did a bracelet ply. So it was just a two ply. And I could see from it that there was a little bit underspun. So I kind of knew that I needed to, to mix something up. And I wanted to do something interesting. So I, I dug out a braid. Well, actually, I didn't dig out a braid. I actually had to get in my car, drive to the storage unit, dig through, had to move furniture and dig through my stash box and uh, find some fiber. So this is Kathy's fibers. She is local to me. She's up in the hills. She's in uh, Lobethal, I think. Lobethal? Handorf, one of those two, um, up in the hills. And um, yeah, so I, I can say she's local to me, I guess. She's from, from Adelaide's um, outer suburbs. So this is her colorway, Terra. I will just grab um, what I have remaining of the fiber. So I have a little bit left of the fiber. Basically what I did is I split my braid straight down the middle. Half of it went on here. Actually, it was a little bit more. It's about 53 grams, I think, went on here. So that's how much 53 grams is of quite a fine spin um, on these little bobbins. And then what I did is I did a fractal. So I was going to do... I'll just pop that up there. I was going to do the second part of the braid just in half, but looking at the, the fibre itself, there was very clearly three strips. So I just did the three strips. Um, I have one whole strip left and here is my electric U wheel nano and I am almost finished my second strip and you can see there that the colors you know as in the fractal because you're using smaller pieces of fiber um, the color changes are a lot quicker than what is on um, just going straight from that half uh, half of the braid so if if you're not sure what fractal means it basically means that you strip your your fiber down into smaller and smaller pieces so that the color changes are shorter so that's probably my favorite way of doing a three ply is to do uh, split my fiber in th in thirds up and down through the braid because i generally work with top i'm not i've not enjoyed the results that i've ever got from anything that's like a bat um so usually i would use a a, a braid of top and so top basically means here's a little spinning spinning lesson if people aren't aware top means that all the fibers are you know in line with each other a bat they're usually a little bit more um all over the place a little bit more random um so yeah i'm using top um so my favorite yes my favorite way of doing a three ply is with a fractal so I have a third, I just spin that straight. Usually the second one I split it into two or three pieces and then the final one I do about four pieces. So, you know, your first single is going to have very long colour repeats, the second one is going to have slightly shorter and then you go slightly shorter again and it does this really lovely mild um, look to it and then every now and then you get all the colours lined up so you do get that sort of colour changes going through then you get a little bit of almost solid and then it keeps going. So that's actually my preferred way of um, spinning spinning a three ply uh, with dyed yarn is to do a fractal. And I wasn't initially going to do a fractal with this braid. However, uh, looking, I was looking at the colours because I was going to split it in half and then spin from one end. Um, so I was going to spin from opposite ends, if that makes sense. So I'm going to split it. This one I'm going to spin from the top. This one I was going to spin from the bottom. However, it turns out it was completely mirrored um, colorway, so it would have looked exactly the same um, either way. So in the end, I did the fractal. So I'm beginning to slouch. I can see that I'm getting lower and lower. Um, so I did the fractal, and I um, I'm really enjoying it. It's this little machine is tiny but mighty. I have to say, I haven't really had a lot of problems with it at all. Um, I got the deluxe kit which means that it came with seven bobbins seven bobbins yeah it was six plus the one that was on uh this is the charcoal variant because you can get purple one as well and what was i going to say i have heard uh kristen from Vollenvine uh mentioned that hers overheated and turned off i personally haven't had that issue however she is in summer because she is in america 
and we are still in the tail ends of winter and like I said this house is quite cool um, so I haven't had that trouble yet and I have spun quite a bit on this like for quite a few hours at a time because it's it's just it's really addictive I'm really enjoying it it is really tiny but mighty and uh, yeah you can see I don't know if you can quite see that little mark there I'm actually mostly spinning at three or four o'clock which is very fast for this machine um, I find back here it's just not fast enough and it's just you know regular scotch tension um, it's got the little drive band at the front here and it's relatively quiet as well I'm actually really really pleased with this little unit um, so yeah I'm, I'm enjoying it and um, I I always find my favorite thing of spinning is the plying so yeah I'm just trying to hammer through all of the initial spinning so that I can ply it and see what my eventual yarn is gonna look like uh, but that's that's a little bit of spinning I've been doing this week I haven't I haven't really stopped apart from being out all day on Sunday I've spun every single day since I got this and uh, seems to be holding up really well and I'm really pleased and the last crafty thing I have done this week is I cracked out those avocado peels and pits and I did some dyeing and this was my result so it didn't come out exactly like I was hoping um, it's a little bit more rose gold than the dusty pink that I was after, but it is still beautiful. I, I do enjoy this. It's a very lovely colour. So this was done, like I said, with avocado. And initially, I I've, I mean, I've, I've known about avocado dyeing for a really long time. Um, I'm pretty sure Monica from Ash and Oak. Hi, Monica, if you're watching. Um, she, I think she... Her yarn was possibly the first avocado dyed yarn that I'd ever seen at the very first fibre feast. And um, so I've always known that it's a thing. I know you don't need any extra mordants because everything that's required for dyeing is in the avocado. Um, but yeah, just never given it a go. And since we moved in with our housemate, he, I think I might have mentioned this before, he eats a lot of avocados and I was seeing all the pits and the peels going into the compost bag and... I decided, hang on, those are perfect dyeing materials. Why am I letting those go into the compost? So, um, yeah, I grabbed them out and I've been putting them in the freezer. And yesterday, well, day before yesterday, I decided to boil up the peels and the pits and create some dye. And, yeah, this was the result. I dyed these yesterday. And if you are interested in seeing the process, you can head over to Instagram at Lovebird Lane there. And I have created a story highlight reel. So if you go to my profile, there will be little um, circles above my grid. And um, you can see there one of them is avocado dyeing. So you can see all the processes that I went through to dye these. Um, these used, I believe it was... Four. four avocados worth of peels and pits so I used four pits and eight peels you know halves because we always cut our avocados I don't know how you do your but we do ours um, we cut them in half and then you know open them up and uh, and and go ham on them uh, <laughs> uh, so yes um, eight peels eight half peels so four four avocados worth um, I got this idea, did I say I got this idea from Wood, Woods and Wool on uh, Instagram is what really spurred me on uh, to try this um, because she did a dyeing, did dyeing with some avocado. She did four different shades I believe with different levels of cooking time and avocado uh, peels and pits added. Uh, and this was essentially uh, almost a copy of what she did uh, for her darker skein. Her darker skein came out a little bit more pink. However, looking through her, um, her she's done the same thing. She has the Instagram uh, stories highlight uh, group. And she used a little bit of lavender in hers as well. She steeped some lavender in at the end. So I'm wondering whether that could have been what gave it that little bit of extra uh, pink tinge. Um, if you know anything about dyeing with lavender, uh, please let me know whether that's why she got that extra little bit of pink because um, I would love to try this again and try and get that really lovely dusky pink that she got. And if all it takes is getting some little bits of lavender for myself, um, I will be doing that. 
So I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping these or if I'm going to be selling these. Um, I'm not sure. I do like the colour. It is a lovely colour, but I just don't know that it's kind of a colour that I would like to wear. Um, I did it on singles because singles is my favourite base. And I was hoping it would be, because these are the last two skeins of singles that I have before, like until I put in another yarn order. I was hoping that it would come out as something that I would enjoy wearing, um, but I don't know if I do. I mean, like I said, I love the look of them. They are very, very pretty, but they're a little bit more of a brownie orange than that dusty pink, like a rose gold rather than dusty pink that I was hoping for. So these, the fate of these skeins remain to be seen. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the process. It was a very time consuming process, something I do have to say. And uh, I mean, my peels on Monday, uh, I think I boiled those for, well simmered them. I didn't boil them because you've got to be careful with that because I know that it can affect the color that you get. So it, was, it wasn't even a bubbly simmer, it was just steaming. Uh, I did that for three hours, turned it off, let it cool and let it sit overnight before I put um, the skeins in and then I cooked it for, I did the same simmering, you know, not quite bubbling but steaming um, for an hour I believe it was to get these. But I did do a little bit of investigating and I did read that apparently how you store the skins and pits can affect the colour that you get. And I, uh, what's the word, I, like I said, I froze all of them. I froze the skins and I froze the peels and <laughs> the pits. Um, I just said the same thing twice. Uh, yeah, so I froze them, but I have heard that apparently the pits are fine to be frozen. However, the skins are best to be dried, um, like in a windowsill. Like you take all the bits of avocado that you can get out of it um, and then just let them dry on a windowsill and then keep them in a paper bag. So apparently that can affect, you get the best colour out of them if you keep the skins just dried in a paper bag. So I guess I'll try that for next time. But yes, like I said, I am happy with them. They are lovely. Um, my housemate was very intrigued to see uh, what I was doing uh, with the avocado pits. And he asked me this morning, he said, did you ever end up doing your dyeing? And I said, yes, I did. So um, yeah, I shared those with him this morning. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I'm, I'm really keen to have another go and, and see what result that I get and possibly this might be something you'll see in the shop eventually some avocado dyed yarn and yeah i hope you like it <laughs> all right so that's about it for today i don't think there's really much that's really been happening um making is pretty much all i've got at the moment so whatever you see on here is pretty much all i'm doing i've been doing a little bit of beading but i'm short on my beading wire so i don't want to um it's it's really weird i don't want to do any because i don't want to run out but then I'm gonna, uh, but then I'm not done. I'm not beating, so <laughs> it kind of is a double-edged sword. Um, uh, I use fishing line, and I can go to a BCF, which is near us, but it's about a 40-minute walk away, one way. So I'm just hoping uh, that Simon and I can put together my bike. That's right, I bought a bike. Um, I'm so excited about it. I put it on my personal Instagram, which is my muddling. So that's most things that aren't really. Um, I've, I've now made that more non yarn related stuff so it's more about stuff that I'm doing in my life and and that kind of thing so give it a follow if you want if you if you just want the yarny goodness then stick with Lovebird Lane uh, yeah I bought a bike which I have been crushing on for the longest time it was probably early 2018 I first saw uh, the the uh, model of bike and it's like one of those really vintage looking ones it's mint colored and um, it's got mud guards and it's got a chain guard and it's got a, a basket at the front and it's got um, a little luggage a little luggage rack at the back as well so I'm so excited um, it's just still in the box at the moment so uh, Simon and I need to put that together uh, the garage is just about done that's where the bike is at the moment in its box is in the garage we got the roller door installed yesterday and uh, it came with a, um, 
uh, one of the electric, you know, so that it goes up and down on its own. And uh, so we grabbed out an extension cord last night because the power is connected to the, the shed, um, but we haven't got lights or anything. That comes in next week. And uh, yeah, so um, we gave the roller door its first go. <laughs> uh, we reserved that for um, our housemate because he was actually going out and we were we were connecting up the electricity so we could give it a go. And oh no, I've got to go, I've got to go. And it's like, no, come on, you've got to do the first honors of closing the roller door, come on. So um, yeah, he came out with us and he pressed the button and we saw it go down and we all got very excited over you know, such a little thing. Um, yeah, it's, it means that we're really Really close to being reunited with all of our stuff and uh, hopefully clearing out this area so I can set up my my studio my little office in the dining room behind me and uh, hopefully get back to dyeing some yarn um, this avocado dyeing kind of took the edge off a little bit but uh, yeah I can't wait to get all my dyes back with me and get my new order of yarn and uh, start dyeing up some some pretty things for the shop and as for the shop, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times. If you are new, welcome. Uh, I am the yarn dyer behind Lovebird Lane and my website is lovebirdlane.com and uh, you can head over there. I do a lot of self-striping and some variegated yarns. So yeah, head over there if you're at all interested. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, has everybody heard of chaffles? I meant to talk about these last week, but I forgot. Um, they are a keto waffle, and I can blame Monica of Ash and Oak again um, for putting me onto these. Um, being on keto, you don't have bread or pasta or carbs really of any sort. Yeah, you know, veggies have carbs in them, and fruit have has carbs, so you try and restrict as much of the high sugar fruits, possible berries and things like that are good. Uh, but sometimes you just miss bread, like you just miss having a sandwich or something like that. And, and Monica said, have you heard of chaffles? And I said, no, I haven't. And they, um, I guess chaffles, the name chaffles comes from cheese waffles. Uh, because uh, there is a type of dough that you can make in keto so that you can make um, sausage rolls and pizzas and things like that. And it's called fathead dough. And it's essentially a dough that you make from melted cheese and almond or coconut flour. And yeah, that's what I use to make pizza. I'll try and stick a photo in because I did uh, put on Instagram the other day a picture of a pizza that I made. Um, completely keto because I made a fathead uh, pizza base. Um, but yeah, chaffles are very much it's very similar. They're, they involve an egg, some cheese and some almond meal and any seasonings and things that you would like to put in there. So I've been having quite a few chaffles. I bought a waffle maker specifically so that I could try the chaffles and they are really hitting that bread uh, need on the head. I went to a family barbecue on uh, Sunday and I knew that there would be bread about and I like to have a little you know a slice of bread with a sausage or whatever so I made myself a chaffel and I took that along and uh, everyone was quite intrigued my uh, Simon's um, dad's partner was like oh I, I can't wait to try that so that's mine I said well, you got your own bread and no I gave her some um, and and she was quite intrigued by it so chaffles give them a go <laughs> you can find recipes all over the place my favorite is pretty much just adding a little bit of salt and pepper and because then you know you can just let whatever you're eating with it um uh, you know give the flavor uh i quite like just a bit of bacon on top of a chaffle it's a very very nice filling uh, sort of lunch so yeah give it a crack I think we might leave it there so thank you so much for watching um, please feel free to leave me a comment or a question in the in the uh, comment section down below if you enjoyed the, the episode give us a thumbs up and if you really loved it make sure that you are subscribed because I try and do this every week and I hope you all have a fantastic week happy knitting happy crafting and I will see you in the next one take care Thank you.